Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We are now starting with another group in plant kingdom and that is Bryophyta. Now this group it includes plants which are found in moist and shady areas. So they are always found in moist and shady areas. And there is a reason for it. The reason is that they require this water. So why is this water required? So that this uh, or rather for this the plants are going to grow in moist areas that means there has to be little water or a thin layer of water present. There are two reasons for this. Number one, they do not have that means bryophytes do not have xylem or phloem that means conducting tissue is not there. Xylem performs the role of transporting water and now as there is no such tissue which can transport water the cells should be in contact with water or moisture so that every cell is able to absorb water on its own. So this is one reason why they are found in moist areas. The second reason is that their male gametes or sperms have to swim up to the female gamete. And when they are using the word swim, that means the liquid medium must be present so that the male gamete can swim up to the female gamete. That means they require water for reproduction. Because if the sperms don't reach up to the egg, reproduction fertilization will not take place. And for this reason, bryophytes are known as the amphibians of plant kingdom. The amphibians, when we talk about the animals amphibians like frogs, we call them amphibians because they are dependent on water for reproduction. And the reason is same, the male female gametes are released in water and the male gamete has to reach up to the female gamete in that watery medium. Same is the case here, the male gametes swim up to the female gamete and for which a thin layer of water is required and that's why these bryophytes they always grow in moist and shady area shady in the sense if there is direct sunlight that little water or thin layer of water is going to evaporate so in the shady areas the water doesn't evaporate that easily the next important thing about them is that they have ordination of generation there is gametophyte stage and sporophyte stage. That means gametophyte stage is the gamete producing stage and sporophyte is the spore producing stage. And these two they alternate with each other. There is another important thing about this is the gametophyte stage is independent. Whereas the sporophyte stage is dependent on gametophyte. That means we will always find the sporophyte growing on the gametophyte. It draws its nourishment from the gametophyte. And gametophyte is the predominant stage. That means most of the times the bryophyte would be found in the form of the gametophyte. Sporophyte stage is going to be a short lived stage. Now when we talk of these bryophytes, they are very small as we said that xylem and phloem is not there and we know xylem and phloem are conducting tissues which would be required to transport water and food. So if this conducting tissue is not there, the material be it water or food cannot be taken to great heights. So normally they are short plants. Short means their height varies from 1 to 3 centimeters. Now the tallest bryophyte is actually
actually a moss and its name is Dawsonia and this Dawsonia is about 50 centimeters tall. This is the tallest uh, bryophyte and it is a moss. The shortest bryophyte, its name is Zoopsis and it is about 0.5 centimeters. So this is the shortest, very, very tiny and Dawsonia is the tallest one and all or most of the bryophytes, they are about one to three centimeters tall. Bryophytes also show one property. They absorb moisture. So their body can absorb moisture. And because of this, we use these bryophytes for certain uh, for functions or certain purposes. For example, because of this property, they can be used for packaging of plant parts or they can be uh, flowers which are need to be transported and we want that these flowers should remain moist then they can be wrapped around with this uh, bryophyte. Same water retention, water holding property is going to help in their usage in grafting. What is done in grafting is a stalk is taken, a skin is taken, these two parts are joined together and the tissue is cut and it is exposed. The chances are that the tissue would get dry. So we can wrap that area or cover that area during grafting with the help of bryophytes. So it is used to cover the grafted area. So the area where this grafting or this tissue fusion has to take place, that is where we cover it with bryophytes. So normal structure is like this. Let us talk about some important examples. And we'll be talking about all these examples one by one. The first is sphagna. The second example is funeria. Third is rixia. And fourth is marcantia. We will be talking about all these four. But before that, out of these, Rixia and Marcantia. These are the primitive forms and they have thalloid body. So their body can be thallus like. So form if we are talking of one can be primitive. Primitive is thalloid. And here the examples are Rixia and Marcantia. And the other form is a slightly developed form that is funaria. And here the body is differentiated into root-like, stem-like and leaf-like structures. We are using the term like structure. It is not leaf, root or stem. The reason is a true leaf has to have vascular tissue. Same is the case with uh, stem as well as the other structure. So these are like structures. That means it is going to function like leaf. The structure is going to function like root but it is not the true structure. So let us talk about one example here and that is sphagnum. Sphagnum is commonly known as peat moss. It is aquatic that means it grows in ponds where water is sufficient. Not only growing in uh, aquatic is important, they, these plants, they grow so close to each other that it makes a thick sheet and it looks like as if there is soil only and on the soil green structures of grass like plants are growing and that areas are known as bogs. Now once these plants die or they dry, then this complete sheet is taken and it is used as peat. So now what is done with this peat? The peat is dried and is used as fuel. People burn it and use these pieces of peat moss or that complete layer. They call it peat cakes 
and they are burnt used as fuel for cooking purposes. Peat also gives products like peat tar, ammonia and paraffin. So these are also products which are obtained from peat. Sphagnum has antiseptic properties and because of which it is used for dressing of wounds. For dressing of wounds. So there are two things that is it can be used as fuel if it dries up and if it is normal it can be taken uh, from the area where it grows and it can be simply used to cover the wound because of its antiseptic properties. That means it would prevent that wound from getting infected. So this is another very very important function which peat uh, is used for and that is sphagnum grows in moist areas. Farmers use this sphagnum, they break it into, uh, it into pieces and add it into soil. So it improves texture of the soil. So the soil gets more of organic matter, its texture improves and its water holding capacity is also enhanced. Sphagnum is also used for various other purposes because it is nothing but a bryophyte and it also has water holding capacity. So it is used for other purposes which we have written here that is packaging. It is also used to cover the grafted area. So same thing. Packaging to cover plant parts or even for transportation of flowers. So this is where sphagnum is used and its common name is peat moss which is very important. So in this introductory part of bryophyte we saw certain very important things that is these names like Dawsonia, which is the tallest one. This is important that we have to remember. Zoopsis, which is the shortest one. And when we talk of sphagnum, the common name that is peat moss. Now we will take the other uh, bryophytes and discuss them in more detail. And that is what we are going to start with funeria. So in the next part, we'll take up funeria. And in funeria, we'll talk about all the structures in detail. That means we'll draw the complete gametophyte, complete sporophyte. We will also understand the reproductive cycle, how these two forms alternate with each other.